Let's give a big round of applause to Michael Gray, John Davey, and Jerry Ordway. Come on up here. I like that we're all repping the ball. Almost all of them are all, all repping the brand here. Have a seat. Yeah, have a seat. I'm wearing my Hawaiian shirt. You do have the Hawaiian okay. shirt. I'm, I'm like the... Have yeah. a seat right here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You guys stay out of your way. <laughs> you are the way. You are the way. You're going to be providing us with all the Captain Marvel knowledge, Jerry. I mean, this is this is the power of Shazam. We're going to be talking about the TV series. But we're also talking about the comic book character that's based on. Um, look, here's the thing, Shazam. Thank you. This is okay. Just a full disclosure here. Part of me wants to just stare at you both for 45 minutes. Yeah. That would be a really awkward panel if we did that, though. So I'm not. I'm going to turn fanboy Joe off. I've got to go into full question mode. This is just mind blowing. It's even now on Tubi, so the show's on Tubi. We've got the Blu-rays. If you don't have the Blu-ray, one of them has Jerry's amazing artwork on it, so you're going to want to get that and get it signed. We can watch the episodes now. Uh, three seasons, 28 episodes. It ran from 1974 to 1976. Let's go down the, the panel here. Uh, Michael, we'll start with you. What is it about this show, Shazam, that still resonates with the audience? We're coming up on 50 years. We're coming up on the half century golden anniversary mark. What do you think it is about this show? Well, one of the major things is the fact that there's the moral values of the show back in the 70s. So many people that come to the Comic Cons I do, and they tell me these amazing stories that are heartwarming about how much Shazam helped them when they were kids. They had problems with their families or their friends or whatever, they were picked on, whatever the case may be. And the way they escaped and got rid of all these problems was by grabbing a bowl of cereal and watching Shazam every <laughs> Saturday morning. That's heartwarming. But that's, it was such a popular show back in the 70s. And unfortunately, it only ran for three years because Filmation ran out of money. They couldn't support it anymore. So that's unfortunate why they canceled it in 1976. But now, again, DC Universe streamed it in 2019. And now Tubi, like you just said, is streaming it now since it's February. And fans are loving it because now it's in HD. So they're loving watching <laughs> it again in HD. It's so clear. And they're just enjoying watching it all over again. Now they're having their kids and their grandchildren watching Shazam for the first time because the kids weren't or the grandchildren weren't born in the 70s. All right. So they weren't around. Now they're watching it now since February, six months ago, and they're enjoying watching it again. So it's a great. I'm just so happy we did it. You know, I got to work with Captain Marvel, John Davey. It was just a great show. I loved it. That's the thing I remember too, is like the morals, because you get to the end of it and it's like the, the secrets of ISIS and, and like all the filmation stuff. It was like, they taught you things. They taught you like, you know, don't be a jerk. Don't be a schmuck. Don't, you know, don't do drugs. Don't, you know, just all these different things. Don't get into dangerous things. They, they did get into dangerous things because John had to rescue them all the time. But it just, it, it was amazing to me that they, they really knew their audience, I think, at that time too. So thank yeah. you for bringing that part of it up. I'm going to comment on that, by the way. The moral values of the show back then, we need that now. Yes. <laughs> we really do. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Moral values would be great right now with what's going on in this country. A lot of violence and stuff. Yeah. Maybe we can sneak it into the movies. That'd well, be nice. You guys will come out at the end of the movie when the credits are rolling and give yeah. us a moral. John, um, why are we still talking about this almost half century later? Well, I think the, the, what Mike has just uh, uh, mentioned, a pretty good list of cases for the show and uh, I, I think the moral values of course was uh, probably the top priority in making the show but uh, I think one thing that, that stands out is that they taught right from wrong without being violent <laughs> you know deadly about, about, their, about life you weren't allowed to do that though where like you you had to be careful about what you were allowed to show <laughs> it's like marvel couldn't hit anybody oh yeah no you know you just that, that was the whole thing like he had to, you know you had to right. he had kids watching exactly <laughs> It was amazing. Yeah. Jerry, give us some background. I mean, let's, were you a fan of the, did you watch the show? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. You had your Captain Crunch like I did? Um, I think, well, I'm, 
I'm 64, so I think you're a little was, okay. <laughs> I was at the uh, age of uh, you know being able to drink by the time the show was on, so it was, was harder not. for me as a you know a young adult getting up on a on a Saturday morning. But I did watch the show and All I right. really enjoyed it. I think the key is what you said. There was a there was a kind of a good heartedness to it, and whether that's something that the network or the Saturday morning you know thing is imposed on them or something but um i do think that the show itself had a good message and it was fun i mean the, he was you know colorful costumes and uh it was all shot what in like locations and canyons and stuff <laughs> that were kind of familiar as a as a tv viewer a lot of stuff was shot in those areas um but yeah I, I, one of the things that I've, I've encountered like alex ross is like a huge captain marvel fan and Alex is a couple years younger than me, and I always think that's the main reason for me. I was, you know, a kid when the Batman TV show came on, and uh, the enduring kind of quality of, of Shazam is there's a generational thing. So in the 60s, we had Batman. There really wasn't a live action, you know, decent live action TV show as superheroes back then. You had Shazam. In the 50s, they had Superman. You know, maybe the 90s, you had The Flash or something. And those shows do, they kind of, they get ingrained in you as a kid. And that's why I think they impart lessons. You know, you, you're a kid, you see this stuff, and you, you do kind of get an impact from it. Um, but I think that gives it, you know, obviously having it show up on a new, every time there's a new format. You know, now it's streaming. When it was on, it wasn't on VHS, right? It never really did get on VHS. When I did the the poster initially for the DVD release, Is I had this to search. One here? Is this yeah. the one you're referring to? <laughs> yeah, I had to. I had go to get the Blu-ray and go get the DVD, please. I had to search online for images, and there was no good, you know, quality images, right. and you couldn't. You'd look at the video, and it was like, oh my god, this was stuff people <laughs> video like tapes. Yes, yeah. it was our bootleg tapes. So it's. That Blu-ray is wonderful to finally see something like that in good quality where you can actually, you know, wow, look, you can see the actors, you can recognize, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but as a kid, I, w one thing that was cool about it was the, the flying scenes. You know, as an adult, I think, oh, my God, my back hurts just watching that. <laughs> just why am I bored? Yeah. Well, ta talk a little bit about it, John. What was the toughest part about... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, go Yes, let's admire Jerry's artwork. It's incredible. I was down at San Diego Comic-Con 2012. And I was down there with Warner Brothers. They were doing a big panel promoting the sales of Shazam on DVD. And one of the heads of Warner Archives gave me this. Nice. So I have it in a, in a, on my wall in my office in my house <laughs> in a frame. And occasionally I do some Zoom videos and podcasts, and this is in the background. And people always comment, I love that poster. <laughs> Did Jerry sign yours? Uh, no, because no, I wasn't no, at San Diego. Well, what? No. Jerry, come no. on. You're, you're slacking here. Sign it. I don't think he knew that I, got, no. I have one. But he I does now. I have it. No, I he does. Well, my, Michael was nice enough to, I remember you reaching out on Facebook and, and paying a compliment. That's, that's what's kind of cool yeah. about it, too, yeah. is the idea. Like, if they had said, put John Davey in there, I would put <laughs> But again, it, it's cool that they these things have a life in uh, multiple you know decades because there's generations of kids who see this stuff. Just like when I was a kid, I wasn't old enough. I was too young for the original Superman series, but that played on you know my local uh, VHF or um, UHF station in Milwaukee, and I got to see the you know, the George Reeves stuff and, and then Batman. And then, so I, I think it's kind of cool. All this stuff has a life like that, that uh, you can, kids ex, it can it dis, you discover it now, you know? Yeah. One other thing that's cool too is we've got one of the writers from one of the episodes uh, here with us today. Um, Don is right over here. Come on up, Don. Let's give him a big hand. Yeah. As I mentioned earlier, if anybody in this room, come on up. Yeah, come on up. Yeah, we want to talk about this episode, too. Yeah, if, Donald wrote an episode called The Brain, one of the better episodes. Well, He's also a great here. producer and a great writer. I'll for you right here. Yep. Good to see you, Michael. Come on down. Yeah, yeah, have a seat. 
You take that one. Go ahead. This was, I oh. think that if I'm not mistaken, that was a Jackson Bostwick episode, right? That yes. was uh, yeah, first and, season. Yeah. yeah, and I talked to Don. We talked about this on Comic Book Central a little bit. This was the one. This is the one with the. Um, the belt that was like the crushing belt they were like crushing rocks it was like a conveyor belt yeah, yeah. And, a, and a kid got trapped on there and i was always like why didn't captain marvel just like fly in and swoop in and save him and it's like well no that you had to put the child in danger and it had to drag out for like 10 minutes well, I'll, t- well, I'll tell you about the end- captain marvel I'll, come in. I'll tell you about a secret about that ending when i wrote the script you know i it was my first tv script i hadn't made any movies myself yet so i didn't know about you know, I was still under the delusion that Hollywood could afford to do anything. So the original <laughs> script I wrote, and it didn't have a conveyor belt. It had a pier, and the pier was collapsing, and Captain Marvel flew in, <laughs> and he saved everybody, and he saved the pier from, and, and it was just going to, it had a, a lot of water hazards involved. That'd be great. And they just couldn't do it. It, it was beyond their budget, so... Uh, Len Jansen and Chuck Menville, who were the story editors, and wonderful guys. I worked with them many times over the years. Um, changed it to the conveyor belt. So you'll have to ask. I think I know Chuck passed away some years ago. Len might still be still be with us, and he might know the answer. But well, that was um, the great Lou Scheimer. I'm sure he, right, he, he, he you guys were on a budget. Huh? You know, Lou Scheimer's budget. He had he had a lot of shows he was producing right then. So Shazam couldn't have all. Yeah, the money. I ran into Lou at, a, at a, an animation annual New Year's after New Year's party at the Autry Museum, and I said, Lou, I got to thank you. You gave me my first job in television. And he said, first thing he said was, did you get paid? <laughs> <laughs> in that kind of. Uh, uh, Oh, that kind of accent, the way he had of speaking, you know. Um, uh, anyway, so that's that's how my ending went. It was, it was different. They changed it. Uh, it's it's a, it's a fantastic episode too. We've got a microphone over here. Oh, why so. didn't you just lift the kid off? Yeah. Well, that was my thought, but then he but then he couldn't like rip the stop the conveyor belt from. I mean, he had to like show a feat of strength, John. Right? You'd like sure. always had to show a feat of strength. It couldn't just be like. If you could just save somebody, it'd be over in two minutes, right? That's like saying, why to keep King Kong from coming through the wall did they build a big door on it? (laughs) A wall that, you know, if he could climb the Empire State Building, why couldn't he just climb over the wall? Did you have a favorite feat of strength, John? Like, like a favorite? I, they put you in the water a lot. I know, like you were in the oh, water constantly. a lot. Oh man! Dragging behind a boat, like like you're holding the boat, you know, stuff like that. What was your favorite? Either favorite or maybe most dangerous thing that you got involved. To me, the most dangerous, although it's mostly in my head, <clears throat> was uh, you know, Jaws came out just about the same time yes. that I did my first season. Shazam. 75. And uh, I've always been deathly afraid of sharks anyway, even though I was raised in the uh, Nevada desert. I still I still had this deadly uh, fear of sharks. So anyway, uh, we're, they're doing this uh, scene up in, the boat, up in the Channel Islands off Ventura. And uh, and they're pulling me along. I'm helping these, supposed, supposedly helping these uh, kids that have been... These ne'er-do-wells. They're yeah. ne'er-do-wells. Yeah. Yes. The shark food. <laughs> the sh- <Yeah>. Shark <laughs> And it, it, I didn't even like the idea of being... I, it, to make myself look, <clears throat> look like I was actually swimming, they had me on a little body board, and uh, I was, you know... Just and, and so when I got in between shots, that's the part that really scared me because I <laughs> because they, there had been because there was so much uh, attention being paid to sharks during that period of time. The, the newspapers, the uh, bo- bo- movies, other than Jaws, uh, they just it. it <clears throat> It, gri- it gripped the national attention, it seems like, and and as this incident was about to, about to happen, there was an article about somebody being uh, attacked by a shark in the oh, channel no. in the Channel Islands, <laughs> where I was where we were shooting this scene. 
And here I've got this red suit on, <laughs> and I'm bl- bright yellow boots, <laughs> and a cape, and, a, and, I'm, and I'm just kicking and treading yeah, tre- yeah. tre- tre- <laughs> water, trying. And uh, and the, and the guy, guys, the, the cameramen, all the crew up in the boats are laughing. They're having a good old time. And I'm trying to. I mean, I'm absolutely terrified, but I'm trying to maintain my <laughs> balance a little bit. And so we th- this probably went on for 45 minutes or an hour, an hour and a half before they got all the shots that they wanted. And I'm just thinking to myself be, because something I had. I learned from reading about these sharks. Uh, the, the great white shark doesn't 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 just go out there and, and cut the water with his fin like you see in the movies all the time. Uh, apparently, a, a great white shark when it attacks its when it attacks its uh, dinner, <laughs> it it comes it comes from the depths of the, of the ocean and yeah. it builds up speed and knocks. And just blocks that. <laughs> so I'm I'm looking. <laughs> any minute I'm just going to see these big, huge teeth. Yeah. Shooting me. Yeah. And I'm going to be on that six o'clock news, but not in the way I would like to. Yeah. Be. Well, thankfully you survived because you know they, yeah. they would have just replaced you for yeah. season three, and they would have brought another Captain yeah. Marvel. So we know how that happens. So um, that was my most frightening one. I, that, well, I know there was uh, Jackson with a uh, lion, I think, and then you with the shark. So yeah, these guys were doing. There's no CGI, folks. These guys were doing it for real. There's a microphone over here. If you folks have some questions, you guys have some. Shazam, Captain Marvel questions. I got a metric ton, but it's not all about me. So if you guys want to go over there, I want to ask, um, I, I want to go back a little bit. Oh, by the way, if, you, if you're on Tubi and you see an episode called Goodbye Packy, that's a good episode. When you're watching it, go to comicbookcentral.net and find us. It's John Davey, Michael Gray, and myself. We're doing a commentary on it. So you can cue that up, three, two, one, and watch Goodbye Packy along with us. That's a good episode. Mm-hmm. We had fun with that one. So thank you, gents, for doing that. That's out at comicbookcentral.net. I want to ask you, I want to go back, and, and Jerry, you can talk about this too, the serials from the 40s, the Captain Marvel serials from the 40s. You kind of brought that in a little bit in your, uh, it's very different Captain Marvel in those. Um, you kind of brought that in Power of Shazam too. And there's also a tie-in, Michael, I want you to talk about the serials, uh, one of the actors from the serials being on Shazam. So yes. let's start with just a little bit of that with Jerry. Can you talk about the influence the serials, the 40 serials had on your comic? Well, well when I was doing the uh, project that Power Shazam was going to be a standalone retelling of the origin <clears throat> and the editor I work with was a really big serial, you know, the he loved the movie serials. So we started talking about it and he said, well, you know, we both loved Indiana Jones right so it's like well it's we could do that flavor because shazam's got egyptian elements and there's archaeology all this stuff is baked into most of the 1940s comics for some reason it was like at the time you know so we decided to do that jonathan loaned me a copy of the laser disc of the adventures of captain marvel and the thing that struck me which i think a lot of people who haven't seen it it's it's kind of hard edged. <laughs> I mean, uh, you're being polite. Tom Tyler uh, is a great Captain Marvel, but he's very mean. He throws a guy off a roof and he, he shoots a bunch of Arabs in right. the back with a machine gun <laughs> well, as they were running away from him. And they the funny one is that's probably, the machine they, gun. He's, <laughs> that's probably why they hammered the guys in the 70s. They couldn't because Tom Tyler was doing all that well, stuff. Well, the, the, the funniest is the one guy who runs away from him. It's like the guy, he doesn't even let him get away, he just chases <laughs> yes. him and like throws him off. A roof, yes. So, um, but yeah, the I think that when you see that, it's worth watching. I mean, there's there's the serials were really kind of fun in their and they they exist in their time, but uh, they're they're eminently rewatchable yeah. for uh, for people nowadays. Just like the you know the '70s uh, TV show and a lot of these things are. You always find something new that you hadn't seen before. But, but you had some fun with that in your in your comic, though, yeah, right? Yeah, you kind of dropped those in oh, so yeah. for people who did watch that. You could kind of yeah, get and the we references. yeah, we were we we're always trying to. I mean, we even did we did references to the the '70s show in the the Power Shazam yeah. the regular series. We did a, a kind of a multiverse kind of thing, and and we put in a, a you know the 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 TV version of it is in part of a montage and stuff to 
because it feels like all this stuff nowadays you talk about the multiverse it all exists and yeah. it's somehow interconnected but comic fans and movie fans we've always known that that exists because we're fans of it so we incorporate it into you know into like a multiverse i guess oh does that mean you guys are going to show up in the arrowverse like you could be in the arrowverse right like <laughs> that you, would be pretty cool yeah i think john that would you'd be... suit up again right look at the guy here no you'd suit up yeah he wouldn't have to lay on a board in front of a truck. Uh, no, it'd be easy. It'd be all CGI right now. I would give a whole new meaning to the word tights. <laughs> <laughs> I'd pay to see that. Um, Michael, talk a little bit about a special guest star um, in the world of Billy, Billy Batson and the 40 serials that you had with uh, Frank Coughlin. Yeah. Okay. T you tell you, you you met him. Yeah. Tell us about meeting. The, this was a Billy oh. Batson from the 40s. Yeah. Frank Coughlin Jr was Billy Batts in the 1940s. And one day we were doing an episode at the LA County Zoo. And all of a sudden we realized the guy that was working there, security was driving around in a golf cart. We realized it's Frank Conklin Jr., Billy Batts in the 40s. So the director said, Frank, would you do a cameo in, in the TV episode of Shazam? He said, sure. So I got to work with him. It was so much fun. He pulled up in the, in the little golf cart and Les Tremaine and I were standing there watching him. We started talking to him. It was so exciting meeting him. Two generations of Shazam, basically, <laughs> meeting each other in 1975, I guess it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah 1975. So that's, that's Billy Batson from the 40s cameoing in, I don't even know if cameoing is a word, but in the 70s, your show. Yeah. So you're Billy Batson, 70s. Yeah. So, cameo? Oh, I also got a chance you get a, to You're going to cameo in the, the Shazam movie? No. <laughs> but I got a chance to meet Asher Angel. I did Denver Pop Culture Con about four years ago. Zachary Levi was there with Cooper Andrews and Asher Angel. So it was three generations of Shazam now, basically. <laughs> right. Because Frank Hawkins Jr. wasn't there, but I got to meet all those three guys. It was great. But they didn't and film Asher them. Asher Angel put it was like 15 years old or something. He was... I'm only five <laughs> six. He's almost six feet tall. So money, I mean, and I, I need nice to meet you, Billy. <laughs> I felt like a midget. <laughs> but did you did you put a, a little bug in their ear? Like maybe you know, like hey, you know, maybe maybe have me and John drive by, you know, pop in. You guys could drive like a Winnebago in. <laughs> would be right. Funny. That'd yeah. be perfect. Would be a kind. Of, would, would you cameo? Would you both cameo in a Shazam movie? Would you Would you be up for that? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Sure, we do. do we both do it. You couldn't. You couldn't tell us if you were in Shazam two, though. If you are, you couldn't tell us that. Well, we're not. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> there you go. they're going to make a bunch maybe, of. Maybe, maybe not. Oh well. Okay. That's the that's the, that's the Hollywood answer right there. Um, have, have you all seen the new Shazam movies? Let's get. Uh, have you seen it? I saw Shazam one. Yeah. Yeah. Right. What did you think of it? I liked it. Okay. It was. That's different good. than our TV series. It yeah. was more of a comedy. Yes. It was fun. I enjoyed watching it. Okay. I didn't see Captain Marvel. My wife and I didn't go to that because we couldn't accept that. There's a woman playing Captain Marvel. <laughs> nothing, well, my wife's a woman, obviously. Sex. <laughs> nothing against <laughs> women. But just, we just thought it was a little difficult. So we did see Shazam 1. We liked it. Your buddy's busting your chops. And we were sitting in a theater watching Shazam 1. And there were three guys sitting next to my wife and I. And they were all looking at me. And they said, weren't you Billy Batson, Shazam in the TV series? Said, yeah, and they were thrilled. They couldn't believe they were in the audience watching the movie, and I was next to them from the TV series. John, you've seen the movie? Yeah. Yeah. You like it? I enjoyed it very much. Yeah. 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 You, it good movie. His suit's padded. Zachary Levi didn't have to have the... You had to work out. Like, you yeah. you filled the suit. Well, I should have worked out a lot more. But <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah. Talk okay. a little bit about that. Let's Okay, so Jackson Bostwick is the original Shazam. He's on... He's, um, cover here but he goes out right there's a whole thing there we michael and i talk about that but how did how did they find you how did what were you doing that particular day i was i had my eight-year-old son yeah and we we're trying to think of things to do uh for, for a couple of days and on into the weekend and uh my agent called and said, uh, they want you out in, was it Topanga Canyon? I think it was Topanga Canyon. I think they shot everything yeah. in Topanga yeah. Canyon. Yeah, yeah, it was Topanga Canyon. Yeah. 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 And uh, to work on this uh, Saturday morning show called Shazam. 
so get out there, they're waiting for you, you know? Now, this wasn't an audition, this was just wait, go, wait. Yeah, <laughs> they're work. filming. Weren't you painting your house? Huh? Weren't you painting your house? No. I thought you were painting your house. I thought I said, okay, so I got no. my information wrong. But you had a mustache or something too, didn't you? Yeah, I had a mustache. Yeah. Captain Marvel didn't have a mustache. So you had to like run in the house and shave and yeah, I, I did. suit I, up and, I had, and I, <laughs> hit Topanga? Because I, I had painted a lot of houses. Yeah. Right? Um, I knew there was houses yeah. somewhere. <laughs> but uh, and it was in the summer, so I was pretty tan. And, when, and he, he, said, he said, get rid of the mustache. Yeah. And, and, and drive out. Here, here's a... So I, I, I just didn't have the right feeling. I thought, God, this is committing myself to something here that I'm not, not too sure. I, I, I kind of, I, I read Captain Marvel as a kid, and but I, don't know, I mean, I mean, I wasn't like uh, Al Pacino when I were competing for the same <laughs> role. I, I was out of work. You know? Yeah. So anyway, I. And my, having my son there, uh, he's eight kind, at the kind, time. I think he was eight at the time, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it kind of turned the tables real quick because uh, I made a couple of phone calls to friends, and and uh, before I made up, before I made up my mind to my agent, and uh, one, one one friend's daughter and my son were pals, and she said, "Oh." Uh, she watches Shazam every Saturday. Nice. So, uh, so I hung up. Thanks, Glendon. I hung up, and, <laughs> and uh, I was still kind of thinking, should I call him and or take it or not take it? Or, and uh, so, I, so I turned to my son. I said, Tom, have you ever watched a show called Shazam? On, he says, Yeah. And I said, he, I said. They want me to play Captain Marvel. And he goes, oh, I mean, he, did, he was just... Uh, <laughs> Perfect. He was just out of, out of control. So I picked up the phone and called my agent and said, give me the directions. <laughs> <laughs> to, to pick a kid. Yeah. We are so glad your son was a Shazam fan because that brought you in. And I think that saved the show because you were phenomenal in the role and you got to do the ISIS crossover episodes. I know we've got questions here. I'm going to get to them. I, I could fanboy out all day. Don, did you see the movie um, real okay. quick? Oh, yeah, I mean, Jerry. I just want to, since you mentioned you were really tanned and you had a mustache, which you had to shave, did they have to put makeup on your upper <laughs> lip? Because I'm thinking of like... In fact, Liz Scheimer and... Uh, <laughs> There was Norm budget Prescott. for that. Norm Prescott, <laughs> when, when I arrived at the, at the uh, uh, location in Topeka Canyon, Lou Scheimer and Norm Prescott were, they cruised in this big Cadillac. Of course. And then the, then the, then the window went, and they, and, they, and they cruised right up next to me. <laughs> standing like, I'm just standing. I don't know where to go. Or, and... Uh, and the wind, window came out. <laughs> they looked at me. <laughs> get in, you do get get in costume. That's great. So I was so, so I'd say probably from an hour and a half to the time I got the phone call to actually jumping off a ladder oh. <laughs> in the in the in Full. costume yep. was probably about an hour and a half. Wow, that's unbelievable. And I, and I was. I was completely in shock, even though I was doing what they yeah. told me to do, and I was running and jumping and doing whatever else I had to do. But uh, and I was I was briefly introduced to uh, Michael and Les Tremaine, and I'm thinking these are the guys, <laughs> these these are the pros, you know, and uh, and they, and they just they they just took me under their wing so yeah. completely that I. I was overwhelmed. I wanted to, yeah. took a lot of the a lot of the stress out of, out of it, and I enjoyed doing the show tremendously. Definitely want to talk about Les Tremaine. Just uh, to finish that question, Don, did you see the new Shazam movie? The uh, kept the, the new the first the, the, the new one. Shazam. Yeah, it was accurate. I haven't seen the new second one. I saw the first. Okay, one. you like it? I, I thought it was it was it's fun. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was a little bit too long though, but uh, fair. But I, I want to say one thing about the Shazam TV show that I don't think anybody's ever said, to my knowledge, 
one reason that the fans love it, especially the older fans who were familiar with the comic book character, and this can't be said for almost any new superhero sh TV show or movie, is the costume looked right. Yeah. The costume looked just like the character in the comic book, right down to the boots. And uh, whose decision was that? Because they didn't have to do that because the kids watching it probably were too young to have ever seen a Captain Marvel comic book. It was a new character for them. But they were that conscientious. They, were, they took that care to make that iconic character look like he did in the comic book. Yeah. I think I, we always say Christopher Reeve's Superman, I think, is, is spot on. Yeah. Linda Carter's Wonder Woman, um, the Shazam TV show. I think they all got it right. Yeah. I think those are the looks. Those are the icon. That's why Alex Ross always like paints these things. And I think it's why Jerry gravitates toward him. Um, we got a quick question. Yeah, let's. Uh, your name and uh, where are you from? Uh, Scott Catton from Quincy, Massachusetts. Hey, Scott. And uh, thanks for doing the convention. I was just going to ask how you guys got casted, but Michael can elaborate on his casting. And you know what the budget for the show was at all? Hmm. Budget. Did you guys have a budget? No. <laughs> well, the budget was obviously. Well, Filmation didn't make a lot of money. That's why the show was canceled after three years, unfortunately. Because had they. They weren't spending a lot of money. They didn't pay a lot of money back in the 70s. So the budget was low, but it was too high for them. That's why the show was canceled, unfortunately. But three years is a pretty good run for a that Saturday a morning run. show. Yeah. Yeah. How'd you get the role? How'd you come into it? Because you, we know, well, Brady, you were on Brady Bunch, one of the best episodes there. Yeah. You worked with um, uh, uh, Brian, uh, Brian Keith, I yeah. think, on the series. Yeah, I did so, the Brian, the, actually it was called The Little People first. Yeah. Then it was changed the name to the Brian Keith Show. And I didn't know, like he said, he didn't audition for Captain Marvel. I didn't audition for Billy Batson either. Filmation Studios called my agent because after I finished shooting The Little People in Hawaii with Brian Keith and Shelley Fabre, and I was taken off the show after the first year. There was some political problem with that, whatever the case may be. So Filmation Studios called my agent and said, would Michael Gray consider playing Billy Batson in the Shazam TV series? So my agent called me and said, would you do a Saturday morning TV show? I said, of course, it's work. I'd be glad to do it. So I, I went out to Filmation Studios. I walked in their office. They just wanted to talk to me about doing it. I walked in the office and Les Tremaine was sitting there. I went, oh my gosh, Les Tremaine's sitting there. <laughs> this is going to be great. I want to work with him. So I didn't audition. I just was asked to play the part and I did. Wow. I loved it. I and think became, you're being he became a teenage idol in, in the process. Well, I th that's the point. I think he was being polite when you said that because you were like, remember, remember Teen Beat magazine? Anybody remember the, like all the teen magazines? Yeah. Michael was on like the cover of every one, and you were like the teen heartthrob of that day. So yeah. I'm gonna guess I wasn't I wasn't around that, but I'm gonna guess that maybe you had some more attention than maybe Brian Keith, and maybe that's why I was named the Brian Keith. <laughs> that's what I'm, happened. Yeah. I'm not gonna say no. that. You didn't hear that here, but. Um, you were, I'm sure you were very polite yeah. about it, but uh, yeah, well, you the were. The reason the, I ended up in Ty Gabriel Magazine and Fave Magazine is because in 1970, I played Burt Reynolds' brother in an ABC movie of the week called Run, Simon, Run. So the teenage idol girls, teen to girls, started contacting Fave and Ty Gabriel Magazine saying, who's this guy, Michael Gray? We just saw him playing Burt Reynolds' brother in Run, Simon, Run, an ABC movie of the week. So they contacted me and said, these kids are interested in you, would you come in and talk to us? I went to fight to Tiger Magazine office, Faith Magazine office, and they did an interview with me, took some photos, started putting me in the magazines, and more kids started writing in and calling them, saying, we like this guy. So now they are, the first article they put me in was small, and the picture that was like a postage stamp size picture. <laughs> So the more kids started writing in, now I ended up on the front cover of these magazines. Every one of them. So that's what caused, basically, little people, you the part in little people, yeah. because of that. And that's one of the reasons that F uh, Filmation Studios wanted me to come in and do the show. Yeah. You were the hot thing, man. Yeah. And fortunately, I was more popular than Brian Keith, and he didn't like that, so... <laughs> I was taken off the show after the first year. You're out. The show's name has changed. And there was only these things like, you know, win a date with Michael Gray. You know, and That's there's like right, people yeah. go in and win a date with Michael Gray. Did you ever go on any dates with Michael Gray? Just with, a couple. You did actually do that. That worked? Yeah, but they weren't really dates. We just, we met for lunch in a restaurant 
right down the street from the Tiger Beer offices. That's a date. So That's a date. I, I think on Seinfeld, with, they say, if it's soup, it's a date, yeah, right? The, the, the girls came in with their parents, and I went in with the executives. My manager at the time was Charles Loffer, who owned Ma uh, Tiger Beer magazine, a fave magazine. So we went down there, had lunch with these girls. So that was the date, basically, yeah. That's the date. They want a date with Michael Gray. Who wouldn't, want, yeah. who wouldn't yeah. want a date with Michael Gray? I think we got another question back here. Uh, were you guys aware of Captain Marvel before you guys were cast? I was. I was. I was not aware of the of the TV show, but I was aware of the character. I was aware of Captain Marvel too. I was more aware of Superman. Mm. You know, because I with Reeves. I used to watch that when I was a kid. I loved oh, yeah. Superman. So I was more aware of Superman than I was Captain Marvel. But I heard of Captain Marvel, obviously, but you know, I was more aware of Shazam of Superman with Reeves. But then I became much more aware of Shazam, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it much better than Superman. Yes. Because I was doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and it paid. Yeah. Next question. Um, hi, uh, Rich Davis from Splash Pages Podcast. Um, one question for uh, Michael and Jason, if I can, and one for uh, Jerry, if that's okay. Um, first for the first two gentlemen. Help me with my memory, because I'm a child of the early 70s. Um, but I thought you guys, I remember it was Shazam, but then it was Shazam Isis Power Hour. Can you tell me the timeline, refresh my memory to go through that? Like, were those two separate shows? Was, was, was that redoing the show and Andy They were two Isis? separate shows, yes. It okay. was just Shazam first, then they started doing Isis, so it was Shazam Isis Hour. Okay. So, so then, like, you, we you were on at like 10 o'clock, I think, and they were on at 10.30. Same shows for the second, for the yeah. ISIS hour. I'm curious, with, with the crossovers you did, where ISIS and Captain Marvel appeared together, did they get any, was there any change in the ratings? Did, did you notice any jump in the ratings when they, you did those shows? I don't know. I got to two, to do, I got to do two episodes with Joanna Cameron. That's about it. He did more than two, I think. Yeah. Four. Yeah, he did four. Yeah. Yeah, they're and they're yeah. they're all on the DVDs. And um, I think what happened was like like uh, Filmation um, didn't own the character Captain Marvel or Shazam. So Lou, uh, <laughs> the great Lou Scheimer, uh, they created this character of Isis, and so like they owned all of that. So whenever they packaged them, because it's like, how does this thing run for twenty? What did I say? Twenty. Eight episodes. How do you get that for three years? You package them in different things. It became the Shazam uh, 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 ISIS Power Hour, and I remember that. But I forget what happened. I didn't care that it was a repeat. It was the 18th time I saw it. We just watched it. We loved it. So that was the cool thing. Um, but those episodes, the crossover episodes, are amazing. And Joanna Cameron. They were fun. Um, she was great to work with. Yeah, she, she was fantastic. She was a nice girl. I, I think yeah. what happened was you guys were so invested in the characters. We believed it. She was so invested in ISIS. You were so invested. Like, we believed you guys were doing We didn't care if you were hanging off the back of a car or flying or something. Like, I bought it. I thought you were flying. It's fine, you know? And the lightning comes down. I think you do that. So I still do. I'm, you know, I'm still watching. I think you do it. Um, I think we had another question right over here. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just had one more. Jerry. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, go no ahead. No worries. No worries. Uh, Jerry, just was wondering, since you um, had... Not too long before you did Power of Shazam, you had done a huge major Superman storyline. Mm -hmm. How did you differentiate using characters with similar, similar power levels? Uh, how did you, how did, in your mind state when you were drawing that, where did, what did you draw from or how would you differentiate the different characters? Well, I mean, like, it's easy enough, like in comics, <clears throat> characters are somewhat caricatured. Captain Marvel had a very distinct look. Billy Batson was a kid. <clears throat> for power levels, I just basically assumed that we had already established that Superman had some kind of weakness to magic, Superman. and it was kind of an ingrained thing from his Earth upbringing, more or less. But uh, that that gave me a, a sense because we did crossover <clears throat> a couple of crossovers with Superman in the comic, and uh, the fans were always very interested because someone wants Superman to win, the other one wants you know Shazam Captain Marvel to win sure. um, so I always kind of was political politically correct I guess in a way because I'd, I'd come up with this concept where the kids shared the power because it was family that was my contribution I guess with the in the 90s was the idea of it being a family and I had young kids and I'd see them fight over their toys and stuff and it was it was just like a natural thing to me so they if all three of Billy, you know, and Mary and Freddie were all 
super powered. The powers were not as strong as if only one of them had it. So I could have them fight Superman and one of the other ones goes off and stops a bank robber and suddenly Superman wins. It was a good way of doing it. But uh, yeah, it's, I mean, the, the characters <clears throat> in fans' eyes, I think they always understood that Captain Marvel wasn't a ripoff, you know, of Superman. He was a distinctly uh, unique and good character. <laughs> Um, so it, it, you know, again, it had to do with the approaches and stuff. Awesome. Thank you so much, Gary. <clears throat> Thank you. Next Thank question. You. Hello there. Uh, two quick questions. The first is for just all the actors on stage. If you, uh, for, despite the character that you played, what other character, uh, superhero would you have played or maybe even preferred to play? If you couldn't be Captain Marvel, who would you be? Rocky. There you go. That's a great superhero. Michael, if you couldn't be Billy Batson, I think you've already said Superman. I think you're leaning towards <laughs> Superman. If you couldn't be Billy Batson, who would you be? Superman. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And the that other might be a short Superman, though, unfortunately. <laughs> they would just cast around you like they do with Tom Cruise and That's everybody exactly. else. Right? Put them on an Apple box. There, was, there you go. Yeah, <clears throat> exactly. And the other quick question is, I know that Shazam is an acronym, but ignoring that, if you, the trigger word for Shazam could be any other word that you wanted, just a personal choice, what, what would that be for each of you? <laughs> it's like a James Lipton type question. That is. It's a, that's a very deep <laughs> Deep question. It is, yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> holy moly. You could make it holy moly. Exactly, yeah. I'd go home holy moly. Yeah, holy moly. Why not? One, yeah. one of the cool things is, yeah. very rare on the show, because you're always getting to yell Shazam. I, I, I'm, I'm fearful of saying that word because I don't want you to disappear. But um, <laughs> you get to say the word all the time, and you turn into Captain Marvel. Rarely did we get to see... Captain Marvel say it and turned into Billy, and I think it was one episode, maybe two episodes, but I think it was definitely one episode where you got to say it yeah, and turned into Billy. A couple episodes, you turned yeah. back into me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So those are always like my cool episodes. I'm like, they never yeah. did that before. That was pretty cool. Um, we, in the time we have, I want to talk about Les Tremaine. Um, can, can you just give us your your memories of Les Tremaine? Um, my goodness, a legend, absolute legend. I worked with a lot of celebrities in my career because I've been doing this for a long time. And I've met a lot of celebrities too, major stars in this business from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And Les Tremaine was the most humble, best actor I've ever worked with in my entire life. He was such a nice guy, he was so humble. And he was a huge star. He was doing radio shows before there were TVs and movies. He was a fantastic actor. I loved Les, he and I became very, very good friends, really good friends. And such a difference in age group too, between the two of us. We became very, very good friends. I loved him so much. I used to go to his house, hang out with him and his wife. He even flew up to my parents' house up in Monterey County once for Christmas. He flew up there with his wife, and my mother and father got to meet him, and they were thrilled because they used to listen to him on the radio back when they were young. And he was doing radio shows back in the 30s and 40s. So he was an amazing guy, and I loved him so much. He was such a sweet guy, and I'm so sorry he's gone. Nicest actor I've ever worked with my entire life, and the most humble actor I've ever worked with. And I met major stars, really, and none of them are humble like him. None of them. Except me. <laughs> you know, and that's one of the reasons why, for many, many years, when I was working, I hung out with crew members, because I didn't like some of the other actors' big egos. And Les didn't have a big ego. He was just a very humble guy, so it was great. And John, your experience with, with oh, Les? He, uh, I, Mike said, uh, said, well, I just... I just feel <clears throat> so much uh, affection for that guy. Mike knew him a lot better than I did, yeah. but he was just a just a great guy. Yeah, yeah, tremendous actor, amazing. Yeah. Did you have another question? Yeah, uh, why were there two uh, Captain Americas cast in the TV show? Two oh, two Captain Marvels. Yeah, two, two Captain, Captain Marvels, Marvels. Um, and we are tight. I bet it was. Uh, um, Jackson was injured. Jackson was injured, and uh, it was. <laughs> Check out comicbookcentral.net. We talk about. <laughs> it. We don't have to. It's a very long story. I know you get it. But um, they they weren't bringing him back. 
for whatever reason. And uh, so uh, Mr. Davey got the call, uh, and yeah. that's why we got two Captain Marvels uh, in that show too. I got do you do you? Re I'm going to put you on the spot, Michael. Do you remember what you would say to summon the elders? And if you don't, I apologize for putting you on the spot. What I would say to the elders? Yeah, how'd you how'd you go bring them in? Oh, uh, oh I always said, "Oh, elders, fleet and strong and wise, appear before my seeking eyes." That's why I contacted them. <sighs> I can die a happy man. I can absolutely <laughs> die a happy the man. The red bulb with the flashing lights, and I, that's how I contact you. Chills. It's chills. I'm sorry. It's a, the, you know. I'm just going back to my my Captain Crunch <laughs> days. Um, gents, uh, you guys are on social media. Like uh, Jerry, you're on social media. Mostly Twitter. Yeah. Mostly Twitter. Don, are you out there on social media? Yeah, I'm on Facebook. And okay. You got uh, in 7 p.m. We're going to run and I over are next. Friends. What's that? Donald Michael and I are friends. Each other. You should. He's yeah, always commenting. Yes. Yeah. He's every, very entertaining. Every time I put a picture of my turtles or <laughs> yeah. something on there. there Don's going to be showing them. movies next door. We're going to show movies next door at 7 o'clock. John, you're, you guys hang out in the Facebook group. I know there's a Shazam Facebook group. You guys hang out there and answer questions and interact with fans. Um, it's amazing. Jerry, you also have the Power Cosmic podcast with yep. Terrific On Zone, Mitch Halleck. Um, my goodness, gents, this is fantastic. I wish we, we I could do this all day. Um, but they're going to be signing autographs. You can relive your childhood. You can uh, discover the show new for the first time. There's so much good. Thank you. Can we go out with one magic word? Can If I give you a one, two, three, can we all go out with one magic word at the same time? Are you guys up for that? All right. You guys ready for this? One, two, three. Shazam! <laughs> Oh, I'll turn this is amazing. John. They all <laughs> turn into John. <laughs> it didn't work. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Hi, this is Maisie Richardson Sellers, and you are watching Fandom Spotlight. Be a legend and hit that like button, and most importantly, have fun and follow your fandom.